the university system must somehow connect youth with the challenges of society and bring that to some sort of direction. And here's where I share my experience with you, what we're trying to do at the University of Delhi. We've had a huge battle. As I said, getting faculty to talk of changing light bulbs is itself a huge task, let alone getting a system to move. And for those of you who are not convinced about what this struggle is, I can in private show you the scars on my back. <laughs> oh, I can see there are many with scars here. <laughs> But let me, let me sort of get back on track here. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to move a little bit towards a system that breaks down, as Stephen said, these barriers between society and knowledge systems. A university system is devised first and foremost, according to me, to recognize knowledge systems in all segments of society. Craig Winter, as I said, is in no system. Mahatma Gandhi never studied at a university. I do not know which university Jesus or the Buddha went. I cannot know of any such university. Let's recognize that knowledge systems exist outside these formal walls. For that, we need to break the walls in literal sense and otherwise. And how do we do that? So here's what we need to do. My, my belief is that we need to engage our youth, as I said, with challenges of society and give them some skills, analytical skills. I'm sure you know that. Quantitative skills, IT skills, communication skills, essentially that. And then let them find their way. So university systems must give that flexibility and freedom. But these must come from challenges of society, which can change with time. So systems need to be swift and fast, and they must move. How do we do that? So we changed in many ways. I'll give you a simple example. I launched a program called Bachelor of Technology Humanities. I deliberately coined it that way, technology and humanities. And I had huge opposition. It's called design your degree. There is really nothing there. You decide. Today I need this, tomorrow I may need something else. But more than half your experiences and learning are based outside our classroom systems. They are connected with society. And it is bringing great results already. A bunch of students traveled to a village in India where they understood that the village had devised its own water supply system for running water. Villages in India generally don't have that. They used and taught themselves some mathematics, some simulation, and used good programming to devise a system that is essentially a model that can be fitted into other systems. Knowledge has come from this, and they have taught themselves things. I brought in some extraordinarily gifted scientists who are very good with their hands. And students who wanted to specialize in some sort of history related program were the ones who were the most interested in what this gentleman had to say and are now taking a course with him. Well, the point I'm trying to make is we also run a whole train as a university, as a college. It just moves and acquaints itself with the challenges of society in India and students try and look at them through projects. The point is this. Eventually, I believe that a classroom should melt from this today's notion into anything. It could be a Starbucks coffee shop, it could be a home, it could be any gathering, or it could be people seated, seated wherever they are and connected. And to that end, India, I think, is making a fairly good beginning. The government of India has set up the National Knowledge Network. It's a high bandwidth high-speed internet superhighway that has connected a huge number of educational institutions in India and is now reaching villages and towns. And knowledge is being brought in and sent back. It's the way the railways work in India. They connected tracks and then they sent goods and passenger trains and it did wonderful things for India in exactly the same way I believe this will. And we need to move from this traditional model and recognize that there is knowledge everywhere in society. University systems should learn to recognize that, certify that, and let students come through that and take graduation degrees. I believe that is the way of the future. Let me just end by telling you that in my system, in addition to whatever changes I brought about, there's a traditional open learning system that runs in a very primitive way. There are far more students enrolled in the traditional primitive system of open learning 
It's the numbers that make up the revenues and the revenues from that system are far more than what I get from all the other traditional systems that I have in place. The need of the future is these open learning systems. We, the challenge is to be flexible and make them open in the true sense, the way Haridrumat thought in the Upanishad. Thank you very much.